Earlier rain just slid off windshields, but now it's freezing over and leaving a thin layer of ice. Today, House Republicans called for the governor to step down, but despite all of this news, Grant's attorney says there's been no wrongdoing and the governor remains defiant. Now, it's not the actual IDs that are the problem, but the data behind them. The change would have changed all Missouri licenses. A Missouri teacher is being accused of having sexual contact with a student. The USDA says the cuts would save $129 billion over 10 years. Officials say they pre-treat the roads, but the rainy conditions like we've been having today often get rid of those pre-treatments. Eight million jobs are expected to appear by 2018, and companies like Amazon, Facebook, and Apple are leading the way. Just hours ago, downtown Columbia was buzzing with people looking to score drink deals, but the city is looking to water them down by proposing regulations. I haven't actually missed a, a home Missouri football game since 1981. Bruce Hackman bleeds black and gold. I was going to games with my dad when I was uh, a young boy in the 1960s, and so I've been going to games for, what, almost 50 years or more, so uh, it's a big part of my life. But the stadium he now knows and loves is getting a $98 million facelift. We're tearing down the existing south end zone. We're going to replace it with a, a new complex that will include a football operations center for, for the team with locker room, weight room. In these renderings, you can see the new end zone is expected to have premium seating and is also supposed to seat about 2,500 Mizzou fans. And as a longtime Mizzou lover, Hackman thinks the new look will give the program a competitive edge. Well, I'm excited about it. I think any Missouri fan should be because, uh, you know, being in the SEC, it's all about being competitive. And you have to have great facilities. You have to have great fan support. Although the stadium will have a new look, Hackman's feelings right before kickoff will always remain the same. It's always excitement. I think we're always, uh, it's the anticipation of the game itself and, uh, just always hoping that uh, Missouri is going to play well. It's now a bipartisan effort. Both sides of the aisle are calling for Governor Greitens to resign. Earlier, top Republican leaders released a statement saying, quote, when leaders lose the ability to effectively lead our state, the right thing to do is step aside. In our view, the time has come for the governor to resign. Democrats are being vocal, too. Impeachment. We should be impeaching the governor right now. And the fact that we're instead, while the public is paying attention to that and waiting for us to act on that, we're instead debating a very dangerous, enormous tax bill that balances corporate tax cuts on the backs of raising taxes on low-income seniors and folks with disabilities. I don't think that's responsible of us right now. Minority leader Gail McCann Beatty says she found the findings of the attorney general, quote, disturbing and that it only adds more fuel to the fire. The new allegations come as Greitens is embroiled in a blackmail scandal. He's accused of taking a nude photo of a woman he had an affair with and threatening to use it against her. Um, we are still under the belief that the governor needs to resign. Um, I also think we are under the belief that if he is refusing to do so, then it is our obligation to take the next steps. Which would be impeachment. And start the impeachment process. But we need to stop sitting on our hands and start acting. Um, the time for investigation is over. Republicans in the Senate have also joined the calls for Governor Greitens' resignation. Speaker Pro Tem Ron Richards said things have, quote, reached a critical turning point and the governor has no respectable option but to step down. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Jessica Porter, KMU8 News. That is completely awesome. This is Ian's face when he heard the news. Something special was coming his way and to him, well, it's a long time coming. Well, finally, I get to, I finally I get to like build and like show people my special skills to actually build stuff. His special skills? I'm a Building Legos, his latest creations. The Hulk, a motor a Ninjago motorcycle, a snake, a robot, like a bunch of robots. And soon, Ian will have the chance to build even more robots. The Boys and Girls Club of Jefferson City received a $1.5 million STEM grant for kids to get hands-on experience with STEM technologies. It was our dream to bring that kind of program to elementary children in Jefferson City. So we're very fortunate that we're finally able to do that. And for a little boy who loves to play with Legos, it's a dream come true. But it can also bring forth opportunities. 
according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, is one of the fastest growing fields in the United States. Eight million jobs are expected to appear by 2018, and companies like Amazon, Facebook, and Apple are leading the way, but despite the growing industry, diversity is still falling behind. According to the National Science Foundation, only 6% of Hispanics and only 4% of African Americans have jobs in STEM-related fields. There is high need in regards to persons of color being in this field because that is how the field moves forward. Your presence affects what happens. Making the grant to the Boys and Girls Club so essential. Even if it's just a small inkling that and this sounds interesting, you being there is going to change everything. So Ian and his special skills, well, they're more special than he could ever know. Jessica Porter, KOMU 8 News, Columbia.